So um, you mentioned that the house that you grew up in, mm -hmm. that uh, Roy and his family would come visit, and all right. these people would come visit. Is that the one you were talking about? Johnny pulled up. In That's front the of? one. That's the one. My dad and mom bought that house with blue suede shoes, money. Uh, is you know, that it, house still there? It's still there. Can we go see it? We can go. Yeah, I'm sure we can. Okay. We can go see it. I'm just thinking if we could get in it. Yeah. We can go the out. Same per, the same lady and her husband. Her husband's deceased now. Uh, has lived in that house for 50 years. But Blue Suede Shoes bought that house. Blue Suede Shoes bought the house. And the, you grew up in that house. I grew up in that house. And things got so bad at, after Blue Suede Shoes, the career started going down. The house was still not paid for in 1968 when they moved to another house. Wow. But she got it after that and lived there that rest of that time. That's right. So your mom and dad had it, this lady had it, and she still has it. That's right. My mom and dad bought it in 56. They moved from there. This was after my dad had started working with Johnny Cash in 68, and like I said, the house still wasn't paid for. Oh. So, no, and, I've been blessed through the years. I've been blessed. I was blessed, number one, to be the son of Carl Perkins. I was blessed to have 22 years of looking, like I said, at the back of that head. Uh, getting to manage him for 10 years and, 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 and trying to give him a lot of things that I felt like he deserved in the business. Number one, to get paid. And I've made sure he got paid. I don't think we got stiffed at any gig. Uh, I'm not saying I'm a bad guy, but I could pull some deals that they'd come up with the money pretty quick. <laughs> we might be the only ones that did get paid, but we always got paid. And of course, my brother, who was uh, five and a half years younger, who was super talented, played uh, bass, but it was strung up for a right-handed player, and he turned it over and learned to play it that way. So he played the big string on the bottom. That's right. Okay. And he played the guitar the same way. We'd play guitars together and he'd make chords and I'd be turning. I said, what are you doing there? <laughs> I couldn't. But, I mean, we were both self-taught. Mm -hmm. And uh, neither, none of us could read music. My dad couldn't read a note of music. I mean, he didn't even know how to spell suede when he wrote, don't step on my blue suede shoes. He spelled it S-W-A-D-E. He said it. And he went to his dad think that that's the way it should have been spelled to begin with. He said, other than the spell suede, S-U-E-D, that's sooty or something. He said, that's not suede. But anyway, uh, I was just a very blessed man uh, to grow, to have grown up with people like Roy Orbison that I knew as just not as a star, but just a friendly guy that would stop by the house. And you knew his kids, too. Knew his kids, all three. Before knew his first passed. wife, Claudette. Right. Uh, got to hear uh, Pretty Woman for the first time on a reel-to-reel -reel tape. He just recorded it that day. He was so close to my dad, he drove from Nashville with a Netrelco portable tape recorder and a spool of tape. And my dad was unfortunately not at home, but he was such a... Uh, had been around our house so much, my mom just let him on in when he pulled up. And uh, he said, I just recorded this song, and I'm really excited about it. I want to call to hear it. And uh, she said, well, he's, he's in England with Chuck Berry. I was the first tour that my dad was home. She said, but man, the kids will love to hear it. Bring it in. He goes back to this Cadillac, still had the fans on it, gets this Nebraska tape recorder and comes in to this house. That we're going to go see. That blue suede shoes put, put my mom and dad in. And he plugs it up, threads the tape through, and the first name. <laughs> That's before it was ever pressed into a record. But he was excited about it. And he drove all the way here. From Nashville to Jackson. Two-lane highway, remember. There was no interstate. He won't let his friend hear it. He wanted. He was so excited about it, and he felt comfortable enough to come into the house. And he should have. He, he 
Plenty of meals there, there's no doubt about that. My mama cooked for all of us. We lived in a two bedroom, just a typical middle class house in the 50s. Two bedrooms and one bath. And the den had a couch, but it pulled out into a bed. I'd give anything if I had that couch. Roy Robinson slept on it. Johnny Cash slept on it. It was made out for Jerry Lee to sleep on it, and he made Daddy mad, and Daddy run him off. He didn't get to sleep in, on that cab. Charlie Rich, all of these guys. Roger Miller, I mean, you know, it was, it was in the den, and that's where the music was made, and when it was time to go to bed, they'd pull, the, pull that fold-away couch out, and that's where Roy and Claudette would sleep back in those days. So now that house has, I mean, musical history. Big time. Big time. Big time. And you know, I go in that house, every now and then I, I, I'll go by there, because it's a, now it's in an out of way place from where I live, because Jackson's going more north, going north. And uh, I'll knock on the door, the woman's quite old now, and uh, and she says, and she, and the last time I went, she said, you're welcome here any time. She said, I know you've got so many members here. And the paneling is still the same as it was. Really? Same paneling up and all like that in the house. And uh, it's, it's unreal, the memories that flood me when I'm sitting there. I, and I've, I've told her, I said, do you really know the history of where you live at, where you live at? She said, you know, for the longest, we got mail from England and everywhere that come here to that keep, keep saying it there. <laughs> I got Scotty fan mail for years after I sold right. stuff with Scotty. But, uh, no, it was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing to, uh, to have grown up, uh, and uh, so take, we're on Crescent. This is the house that we moved from Park. That in 1968, one dad was working with Johnny Cash when he wrote uh, "Daddy Sang Bass." Uh, this was the house. That we okay. Moved to. So right here is the house, mm -hmm. and this is how you doing? And this is the house. So the house that Blue Suede Shoes bought. Right down here came to this house. That's right. Okay. All right. Now we're Very going cool. to the one. Thank you. This is Park. This is where, uh, well, we'll pull over here. To so the other house was on Crescent. That was Crescent. That was 1968 to 1979. This, and the lady's not here. So this, this is the house. This is the house. So Blue Suede Shoes bought this house, 308 Park. This is it. All right, let's get out. This driveway, I mean, this is it. There was not this on and covering right here. So this covering wasn't here. No. Now, was that a garage that they closed in, or was that part of the house? Oh, in. My mom and dad it was closed in after they bought the house. It was already done. Oh, okay. But that was the den. That window there is where the den was at. And that's where Johnny Cash and his wife then was sitting in. Lord. Wilkerson and Claudette, they had three sons, uh, I don't know if they had three kids at that particular time. I know they had at least a couple of the kids. And uh, this, that plaque is still the same plaque uh, that says three away. Really? Yes, sir. But this is where you heard Pretty, Pretty woman. woman the first time. The, the maroon Cadillac pulled up this driveway. My dad, we only had, my mom didn't drive. So we only had the one car. So he had taken the car to the airport. When she wanted to go anywhere, grocery shopping or take us kids anywhere, we had to take a cab. So there wasn't a car here. So when Roy pulled in, he pulled straight up in the driveway. And it was in a maroon 63 maroon sedan Deville Cadillac with a fan zone. And you can remember seeing it. Oh yeah. Just can, like it was yesterday. Oh, right out that front door. The front door, uh, that's the same front door. It didn't have the wrought iron to it back in those days. And, and back in those days, 
we had window air conditioning. There was a window air conditioning in that window, and that was my mom and dad's bedroom right here. They had a, a window air conditioning. And, uh, but everything else was, now that, there were trees, elm trees, that were all in the yard. But there was enough path to where, when he bought this house, he had the Cadillac that they traveled in, but he wanted to buy a Lincoln, too. So he went to the dealership and bought that Lincoln. He couldn't pull both of them in the driveway. So he pulled the Cadillac in the driveway, and when he'd come in with a Lincoln, he'd just go through the yard and park it right over here. <laughs> but it was raining, so needless to say, there wasn't no grass. Yeah. So it didn't look like this, no, exactly. No, uh, it wasn't this manicure. There were four kids running around here barefooted with J.C. Penny tennis shoes on and trees and him pulling up uh, a luxury car, and it was sitting here. Then he had the trailer. The reason why he couldn't get them both up here is because he had the trailer pulled sideways that they pulled the instruments in up against the house there. So he only had room for the Cadillac right here and it left just enough room for where he could pull the Lincoln up through the yard. That is funny. That's is this paved like this, same concrete? It, this is the same concrete. This is exactly... It's amazing what, that this stuff lasts that long. It, it, it's unreal, but this is, the, this is the same concrete. That's the same walkway. How about the little fence back there? No. When we moved here that I can remember, we had like a... Back in those days, it wasn't a privacy fence like this, vertical. They were more horizontal and more weaved-like mm -hmm. fence, and it was white. That's a real small backyard. So how about the uh, gate back there? Was that no. added? So no. none of that stuff was no. there? No, the brick and none of that wrought iron. There was no wrought iron around here at that time. We had the wooden fence around the backyard, and, uh, of course, they had the fireplace, and that was real. So how many bedrooms in this house? Two. So this is the one you were talking about, two bedrooms. Two so, bedrooms and one bath. But that was big time back then. Well, it was typical middle class. I mean, you were moving up to move well, here. from from, from a government project house yeah. to here. So this was, this was like Elvis having Audubon. Exactly. Same, same scenario. Yeah. This Elvis was that transitional was house. Up, but it was still in the same vein as, as the house on Audubon. That makes sense. Yeah. And, uh, but no, everything, this sidewalk, everything is still the same. How about this thing on the wall right here? I don't know, uh, that wasn't there. Okay, now, that's something she have, put up. We had like ivy growing. He had ivy growing all over the front of the house back in those days. There was no shutters on the window. And I, I can remember ivy had been there. But now that front door is the original front door, that wooden door. That's where Roy knocked. There wasn't no wall around there, but that's where he knocked on the door. So how did y'all end up here as opposed to the government housing? Is this close to it? No. Is this a part of town that no, this, this was, was the middle at, class at, part at, of town? At, 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 at that time, this was, when you got in this area, you, you were kind of like where we just came from out yeah. there. You were, you were working class, but middle class people. And this, this was a really nice neighborhood at the time. Kind of like it was on Audubon. Yeah. And I mean, it, it may still be it's, that. It, Audubon still is that. Yeah. Right. But, but, there's, it, but the other parts are really close. Well, you say there's a lot of similarities. You can just tell by looking at the, the width of the street and the way it was with Audubon. Yeah. I mean, that was in Memphis, and needless to say, there was more yeah. down there than Now, 1414 Getwell, which is where Elvis was before, mm -hmm. the houses were similar to this. Right. You know, mm -hmm. they were very similar to these sizes. Right. Well, this was probably one of the largest houses on the street. Let's see, that's a duplex right there. Yeah, next door. And uh, that's out there. Man. I'm going to look over the fence back here. She comes and catches me. So there's the backyard. But and you this had... Door, this is the same wooden door. That door is the same. Now let me tell you about that door, the reason. That door is a half door. You can open up half of it 
<laughs> okay, so I don't know why. Top half open. But it was it's still the same door that it was when in fifty six. How about the uh stained glass look? Yeah, it's the same thing. It's the very same door. Except for the wrought iron door. And that didn't we didn't have that. That is incredible. This is great. So Johnny, Johnny June Cash. Carter. I mean, no, it'd been Johnny and Vivian, Vivian at the time. Johnny and Vivian would come and stay. It would be Roy. Now, I'm look. I'm not talking about just overnight. These people would come until my mama pulled my daddy off and, t and tell him. She would tell him, say, "They gotta leave. I've got four kids. I'm trying to feed, and I can't feed them and their kids too. And it's time for them to leave." And my dad would get John or especially Roy. Roy was bad. And say, well, uh, you know, I, we've got something we got to go do. And they would leave. Well, my mama would usually put them up. They didn't leave on their own accord. My mama cooked for everybody. And they would stay for days? Days. Wow. Stay for days, and she cooked every meal. Claudette, beautiful lady, lazy. <laughs> would not help my mama do anything. Would sit and watch her. In that kitchen, right off of this den here is where the kitchen was at. This window right here was the dining room. This window right here was the living room. That was the bedroom. There was another bedroom on the other end, and then between the two bedrooms was a bathroom, and that was it. That's something else. And Claudette passed in '66. Right, motorcycle, you know, motorcycle right. right, right. And I've got a story coming up about that, friends. If you hadn't, if I hadn't already put it out. Man, this is incredible. And you wouldn't know. It's just an unassuming place out here in the middle of, of a little neighborhood. Let's say the man lives in this house right there. And he sees this big Cadillac, which was big time for even a neighborhood like this back in those days. Kind of like Elvis on Audubon. Yeah. Pull up here. Well, I'm sure a realtor, a house was for sale. And pull up here. Can you imagine him looking out the window and peeping? And then after seeing the Cadillac, see a Lincoln parked up in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? But this is where I spent the first 15 years of my life. I grew up here. It brings memories back, flooding, don't it? Oh, man. And back in those days, and I'm sure you probably experienced this, when it was supper time, and it usually would be between 5 and 6 o'clock every night, Mama would just come to the front door and holler, Time to eat! Us kids would come from all directions. We could hear her. And here we'd all come running to come and eat. That's back when families sat at the table and ate and shared meals together. I don't hear I don't hear that in my neighborhood. I don't either. Mm -mm. I don't hear anybody saying time to eat. Mm -mm. If somebody says that nowadays, everybody gets in the car and goes to a fast food restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. And that was still going. That was going on in my time too. I'm not now. Roger I'm, Miller. Well, not a lot car, younger than you. Uh, well, that car's parked. Mm -hmm. Roger Miller. One time he got a ticket, parking ticket, because he pulled up pointing the wrong way. He was pointed this way. And he come out, and he had a 55 white Ford and had a ticket under the windshield. I think it was like for $2. Raising Kane out here, man, he was just all get out. And he had stayed too long. And he went one time and had a flat tire on his old car out there. And and, and Mama told Dad, she said, don't even go out there and help him fix it. She said, maybe he'll get it fixed and just go on and leave. He didn't stay too long. <laughs> but, you know, it wasn't, you know, it was just, I guess it was the way, the, the times, the, the way things were back then. These guys loved my dad. Well, I was going to say that shows that they really loved your dad because they wanted to be here around him. Well, you got to realize when Roy Orbison got the Sun Records, who was he looking up to? He mm -hmm. wanted to be a rock and roll star. Carl Perkins was the man. 
he was the one in 56. Mm-hmm. Because Elvis had already moved on to RCA. Elvis was already gone. And then, of course, you had Jerry Lee to hit in, in 57. And uh, and the reason why Sam Phillips, see, didn't have a one pressing plan. So the way he did things, if your record was not doing real good and say another Sun record was doing good, but your record was still climbing some, he would stop production on that one that was lower in the charts. Hmm. A perfect example of that was Billy Lee Wiley, who had a hit song with Flying Saucers, Superman, whatever the name of it was, who had a hit record. Alan Freed had said, this will be a top ten rock and roll song. But he got bumped. You know what bumped him? Hmm. A whole lot of shaking. Jerry Lee. That's right. That's interesting. But at that time, he didn't have but one pressing plant working for some record. So he stopped production on Billy Lee Riley's song and threw it all towards a whole lot of shaking. The rest is history. Everybody remembers Jerry Lee Lewis. Nobody remembers Billy Lee Riley. It's funny how that, that little stuff can make a difference. Those little things, and, and, and it's, it's always the little things that blow up to be big things. It's not big things that become bigger, it's the little bitty things that blow up that, that makes somebody. Look, what happened to, uh, to Roy Orbison? He goes to Nashville, he cuts some tracks with, with, with uh, Chet Atkins at RCA, and Chet says, look, I can't do it. But I hear something that you've got. But I am not at liberty to push it any further and spend any more money. He said, but I got a good friend who owns a smaller label, Monument, Monument. Fred Foster. Fred Foster, yeah. And he said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call him and you go over there and talk to him. Well, now Fred Foster thinks he's getting Warren Smith, who did Rock and Roll Ruby. He doesn't know Roy Orbs. He doesn't know the name. He doesn't know Warren Smith, but he remembers the song Rock and Roll Ruby, and he thinks Roy Orbison is the one who had that song. <laughs> when Roy gets there, he still doesn't know that he, he's not the one that did Rock and Roll Ruby. Then he hears Roy, they go on, and he confesses later on, Fred Foster said, I thought it was this guy that did Rock and Roll Ruby, which was Warren Smith. So what happens? Everybody knows who Roy Orbson is. Nobody remembers Warren Smith. Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> That's funny. But it was a song that impressed Fred Foster. And the guy singing it had to impress him too. And it had to be Warren Smith. And that's who he thought he was getting. He got it mixed up. He got it mixed up. But Roy was meant to be? Oh, there's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Have them right here, friends. Blue suede shoes bought this house, and you heard the rest of the history. This man heard Pretty Woman. First time. On a little tape no, recorder, reel to reel. No, no Relco, it was gray. It had two knobs, a volume and a tone, white knobs on it, and, uh, and an oblong start knob on it, small. And he and, played it for you three kids? And your right mama. directly behind that front door right there. He plugs it up and he plugs it. That is incredible. And that was before it was ever pressed into a record. He was excited. I don't think he even realized at that time what Pretty Woman would eventually be and still be timeless well, not that's, only that's classic, his blue suede shoes not yeah. only classic but it's timeless yeah it is and his recording of it is timeless one of the few that, that can really say that the record, recording cannot be topped even today mm -mm. you cannot top Roy Orbison's recording in 1963-64 of Pretty Woman I agree sonically unbelievable unreal yeah unreal yeah so the house before this house, which was government housing. Well, now there was one. Park. All right, now we, there was one between the government project house and this house here, and it was a duplex. It was on Camden Street 
and uh, East Jackson, which has got to be a pretty rough place. Uh, but now they didn't, my mom and dad didn't stay there but a few months. Okay. And it was just uh, uh, a half to thing that they had to do before they got any money, but they got run off from the government project. Hey, this guy's waiting for you. You're clear. I can see it. Thank you. But, you know, you think about it, that's pretty sad to get run off from a government project. <laughs> <laughs> But the, you say that government project was called what? Park View Courts. Okay, and it got torn down by a tornado. Yeah, a tornado. It had gotten pretty drug infested, and it needed tearing down anyway. But it was, uh, uh, the, the tornado did the job that the city of Jackson didn't have to do. They just had to clean it up. And if you're new to this channel, Adventures of the Spy Guy, I have more than 600 Elvis videos. And don't forget to check out my sidekick, Globe Trotting with Trey. He has over 150. And we both focus on true Elvis stories and what really happened. So if you want to support this effort, make sure that you subscribe, like, and then join. That helps us to get more videos out there. Yes, it does.